A few days ago, I released a new short film called Nature at Its Most Unnatural, and today I wanna break down how that video was made. As usual, I'm gonna be starting out with the split screen breakdown where you can see the raw footage in the top left, final video in the top right, and the timeline scrolling at the bottom. I've also muted the music entirely so you can just hear all of the sound design in detail. But before that, I want to give a brief shout out to my homies over at Musicbed. I've been using Musicbed to license all of the music in my videos for the past several months now, but I haven't really talked about them in a video. Beyond just being very supportive of what I do, I'd say they're without a doubt the best place to get music for your films and YouTube videos. And I've also just worked with them to put together a playlist of the music that I've been using in my videos over these past several months, including the music I used in the most recent short film. That playlist will be linked in the description, and if it just blows you away and convinces you that you need to sign up for Musicbed, you can get the first month of an individual subscription for free by using the code Aiden at checkout. They're not sponsoring this video, but that is an affiliate link, so if you sign up through that link, I'll get a little kickback from that, which helps support the channel. All in all, I wanted this last film to have a very eerie vibe, and I think the music choice was an indispensable aspect of creating that atmosphere. But that being said, we're not gonna listen to the music right now. I cut it out so you can hear the sound design. I'll be back in a few minutes after the breakdown. At times, our world can feel quite otherworldly. And nature can appear quite unnatural. That's what brought me here. Through hours of driving and climbing, through the dark and the cold, this summit, just in time for the sunrise. That's what brought me all the way up here this morning. The opportunity to watch this familiar landscape transform into something that just doesn't look real. several inches of snow and low visibility for most of the day, but we should see, we should see the fog eventually burn off in the evening, making way for a pretty, pretty phenomenal sunset for those willing to make the long hike up the mountain today. Check in with our first spot. hours of driving and climbing, through the dark and the cold, to this summit. That's what brought me here. At the start of the year, myself and my boy Andrew James took a spontaneous little road trip out to the Smoky Mountains for a weekend to try and chase this winter storm that was coming through the area. And we didn't have any particular concept in mind. We were kind of just driving around shooting for fun. We ended up getting a ton of crazy weather, just back-to-back -back fog, cloud inversions, crazy sunrises and sunsets. And so I decided to tackle a concept that I've had kind of shelved away for a few months now to take these crazy weather conditions and combine them with visual effects to show how surreal the outdoors can be with the right weather conditions. Of course, the aspect of the video that seems to have stirred the most interest from you all is the visual effects, which makes sense. There are a lot of visual effects 
in this video. The most dramatic effect in the video is probably this tree blur effect that I used in a few different sequences. This one was inspired by a photographer on Instagram who goes by at Deimos. Great photographer, has some really interesting, like futuristic, surreal, uh, work in his feed. Definitely follow him. I had seen him use this effect in his photography and I wanted to see if I could pull it off in a video. And luckily we had the right footage in this particular project so I was able to give it a go and somehow it actually worked out pretty perfectly. And I'm going to be showing you exactly how I did that effect in detail in another video later this week. I also used the long exposure water effect quite a bit throughout this video and this is one that I've made a tutorial on in the past, but I actually took it a little further with this particular video by finding out how to use it on handheld footage. That's a whole ordeal, and if you all really wanna see how I made that effect on handheld footage, leave a comment down below and I'll go through and remake that old video with this new technique added into it, give it a little update. Basically all I had to do was use warp stabilizer and some two point tracking in After Effects to stabilize the footage such that the water stayed in the center of the frame even when the camera was moving. And then I just added the effect the exact same way, then went back in and added the camera motion back into the shot. There's also a couple shots where I added some really dramatic motion blur to the clouds in After Effects just by using the CC Force motion blur effect and cranking it way the hell up. I added some extra fog into two shots in the video. I mirrored a shot so it would be perfectly symmetrical, flipped the establishing shot upside down, anything for that unnatural vibe. As fun and flashy as the visual effects are for this one, I think the key to creating that eerie, unnatural vibe is the atmospheric sound design. I leaned really heavy into the abstract, like, whooshy background noise in this particular project. My favorite sequence is probably this snowy forest sequence where I found these creepy, like, shimmery sounds and, like, ghostly, like, background whispers and used those to just create this very creepy, ghostly vibe. I took those whisper sounds and panned them around so, like, some would be in the right ear only, some would be in the left ear. I think I had one that, like, moved around from left to right, then back to left, and just feels like they're all around you, like, moving around the scene, just creating this very... Like, ugh, it's, ugh, it's icky. I dig it though, I like it. And finally, let's talk about the voiceovers. Um, initially, for the intro to this video, I did my own voiceover in my usual tone and style where I'm just talking as myself. At times, our world can feel quite otherworldly. And nature can appear quite unnatural. I think that's why lately I've been so eager to get up early in the morning drive hours in the dark, and hike a mountain in icy conditions, all before the sun even rises. To experience those moments when a place as mundane as rural Tennessee turns into something that just doesn't look real. But watching back the edit, I felt like that just didn't really match with the rest of the video. It didn't match with that eerie vibe and it almost kind of broke the fourth wall. So I took that same voiceover script, rewrote it into a much more experimental kind of mysterious fictional vibe and then paid a voiceover to read it instead of me doing it and, you know, breaking the fourth wall, you could say. It also just makes the intro to the video like that much more punchy and epic, having a voice actor do it because he has like a nice deep silky voice, whereas I, you know, don't. I also added two weather forecast voiceovers into this video to further establish kind of the setting and the storyline. And this is actually the third time I've done this. I used weather voiceovers in Sounds of the Pacific Northwest about a year ago, and I also used them in a hiking vlog a few months back. I love using these because I'm kind of getting bored of just doing voiceovers myself in my videos. Like it doesn't feel very creative and feels almost like a cop-out way to tell you what's going on in the video, but a voiceover is also a very good tool for exposition, especially in a travel video. So I like finding a unique way to incorporate it into the video. And that was the idea for this one, to make it seem kind of like the character had, you know, maybe a radio on them while they were hiking, that had this poor connection, but we're bringing in little bits of exposition here and there through that device. So I wrote up two more scripts, sent them off to a couple more voice actors, and then took that audio, 
put it throughout the video and kind of chopped it up, distorted it, and then spliced in some other like stock broadcast audio to make it sound like the radio had this bad connection that was going in and out throughout the video. I think that just added even more to that spooky, weird, creepy vibe. Went to Wonderland out here. It's hard not to feel entranced looking into the water. water, water. Feel entranced looking into the water. But that's all for today. I hope you enjoyed this video, learned something new from it. If you did, feel free to show your support by leaving a like on the video, sharing it with your friends, or even subscribing to my channel and following me on Instagram. If you have any additional questions about what went into making this film, feel free to of course drop those in the comments below. But that being said, keep creating and I'll see you in the next one.